My name is Rachel Flack, and I'm going to be leading you through a yoga session, a yoga flow session. This will be a little less than an hour, and you can see this yoga uh, session either on the wheel or on YouTube. And you can find that YouTube on the website, kingspointsuncitycenter.com. There'll be a link there that you can watch the YouTube video. Now with YouTube, of course, you can stop it at any time you need to and rest or take a break. But on the wheel, it will go straight through. You won't be able to stop it. So you'll need to have everything ready before you start. If you don't have a mat at home, you can use something that provides a little bit of cushion, again, with the concern that it's not slippery for you. If you don't have blocks, you don't need to use blocks, but you may want to use a chair. And I'll be using that during one of our flows, just to show you how. On the YouTube video, you can leave some flows out or poses out. Otherwise, on the wheel, you may just want to modify or use alternative poses if you know them. If not, maybe just stop while the wheel is continuing to go. The temperature in your house may not be the same as the temperature that we keep our workout rooms in. Usually the workout rooms are anywhere from 67 degrees to 73 degrees. So if your house is not at between those temperatures, you may need to um, either wear a jacket if it's a little too cold, colder than that, or uh, stop if you start to get overheated. At the end of our yoga practice, one of the most popular poses we have is our relaxation pose. We usually limit that in class to no longer than five minutes. But today, you'll be able to go longer just by staying longer on the floor. And we'll continue to have the music run a little longer to help accommodate you, uh, help accommodate you on that. All right, so we're going to get started now. I have a pillow just to make things more comfortable for me during relaxation. I have a chair that I've mentioned that will be one of our um, accessories to help us. I have my water in case I need a drink break, which I can take at any time. So we're ready to get started. Let's stand in our mountain pose. So feet are hip distance apart. My arms are by my side. I've stacked my joints on top of one another. My head is lightly balanced on my shoulders. And I feel that invisible string coming up my spine through the crown of my head, attached to the ceiling, pulling me a little taller into my mountain pose. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close my eyes and just turn my awareness inward towards myself so I can focus on myself. Just letting my mind quiet down. This is a different environment than I'm used to teaching in and you're used to taking a class. So the mind might be quite active. We just want it to quiet down as it gets used to the fact that we're just standing in our familiar mountain pose. Then we're turning our awareness to our breathing. And just noticing how our breath is today, as it's different every day. And then the breathing pattern that we're going to breathe today is our four, six, eight count breath. So it's an even inhale to exhale. We're inhaling as we count to four and exhaling as we count to four.
And now we're going to elongate that breath by just two more counts. So now inhaling as we count to six and exhaling as we count to six. Taking our breath a little deeper so it lasts a little longer. our breath lengthen as we inhale and count to eight and exhale as we count to eight. We're using the same pace of counting as when we started with our four count breath. Just allow your breath to go back to your normal breathing pattern. And let's go ahead and open up our eyes. And let's just remind ourselves that for this next hour, we're still focusing on ourselves. No matter what's going on around us, there may be other activities in your house going on. You may hear some distracting noises coming through the recording. Just let that all float on by, keeping focused on yourself and on your yoga practice. Let's slowly take our arms up overhead, inhaling, and then exhale your hands as you bring them to heart center. Let's pause here, taking a slow, deep, complete breath. And taking your fingers up towards the ceiling, exhaling your arms down by your side, returning hands to heart center, pausing here, taking a slow, deep, complete breath. And then let's just allow our hands to unfold. Sweeping them up overhead, inhaling, exhaling your hands as they come back to heart center. Taking a slow, deep, complete breath. And then pointing your fingers away, extend your arms, and then lift and open your chest as you open your arms out to the side. And then bringing your hands down by your side, back into your mountain pose. Pausing here, taking a slow, deep, complete breath. And then let's take a little wider stance, a shoulder distance apart stance. Bring your hands to your hips. Bend your knees a little. Let's start to do our hip rotations. Starting to loosen up our hips, our lower back. Yeah. 
and then go the other direction with your hip rotations. And then come back to center. Now let's do some lateral bends. So I'm going to slide one hand down my leg, the other arm goes up and over. Over to the other side, I'm going to exhale as I bend to the side and inhale as I come back up to center. I'm going at my own pace, the pace my breath wants to breathe. in my mountain pose, taking a slow, deep, complete breath. And then I want to turn to the long side of my mat, taking a wide plie stance. My legs are straight, my feet are pointed a little diagonally out to the side. I'm raising my arms up diagonally. I'm bringing my thumbs together overhead and then my elbows come down as if they're going behind my back as I bend my knees. I rise back up, thumbs together overhead, elbows as if they're coming behind my back, fieing down. Let's connect in with our breathing here. And I want to inhale as I rise up and exhale as I plie down. I'm going the pace that my breath wants to breathe. time you bring your hands up overhead, bring your palms together and then sweep your arms down. You're tilting a little bit more at your hips, but your legs are doing the same thing. Your breath is still in. You're inhaling as you rise up and exhaling as you plie down. Next time your hands come up overhead, just bring your arms out to the side. Let's bend one knee and straighten the other. So we're just moving side to side, shifting our weight from one leg to the other. Now let's bring our hands into our chest and back out again. And 
then let's just go back to our side to side movement and then come back to center bringing our arms down and let's walk our feet in together heel to toe back to her in our mountain pose let's pause taking a slow deep complete breath and then let's stick to the top of our mat and let's come into our chair pose so we're sitting down into our chair we're checking our alignment our knees stay back behind our toes more over our ankles we're hinging at the hips and pushing that bottom way back arms are out for our counterbalance remember they can be straight ahead or diagonally up if your shoulders allow it now let's go ahead and start a flowing chair so we're going to drop those arms down Start to take them to the back as we stand up, bringing our arms up overhead and bringing our hands to heart center. And then we continue our flow, sweeping our arms forward as we sit into our chair. Dropping the arms down and back, making a big circle up overhead. Now you don't need to continue to follow me. Maybe you can make this practice of a chair flow your own. Maybe you want to hold in that chair for a little longer before you flow on. Maybe you want to take your hands up into slightly different arm circles. Any of that is fine. This is your time to experiment and move in your chair pose the way that feels good to you. Focusing not only on our flow and doing that, but also how our body feels in relationship to that flow. Always staying in a range of motion that feels comfortable. If we're feeling any pain, we stop doing that movement or stop altogether until that pain goes away. Pain being a warning signal of the body. So we check in to see what's going on. What we want is for this to feel good to our body. It feels good to flow and move. And then the next time we bring our hands to heart center, we just pause right there. Take a slow, deep, complete breath. And then let's take our arms out to the side. We're going to swan dive into forward fold. So I'm hinging at my hips right there, that crease where the leg meets torso. And bring my arms down to the floor. They don't need to touch the floor. Hanging in midair is fine. Release your head and neck. Let it hang, loose and limp like a rag doll. And just keep breathing. And then slide your hands up your legs. Come into a flat back position. So my hands can be anywhere on my legs, but I don't want to be pushing on my kneecap, not on my joint in a flat back position, so my hips are still hinged. And then slide your hands back down, letting your knees bend if needed. Just gaining your breathing, neck is loose and limp. Now let's take our hands to the side of our feet, stepping back with our right foot into a lunge. And you're just letting your hips Sink down as much as feels comfortable. Your knee is over your ankle or slightly behind it, not over in front of your toes. And then go ahead, step that back foot forward, coming into forward fold, just hanging and breathing. And then let's take our hands to the side of our feet. Step back with our left foot into a lunge, letting the hips sink down just as much as is comfortable for right now. And then 
then step that back foot forward, coming into forward fold, just hanging and breathing. And then let's bend the knees, sweeping our arms out to the side, rolling up our spine one vertebrae at a time, pressing our feet strongly and evenly into the mat, bringing our arms up overhead, relaxing the shoulders down. And let's come into our chair pose. up a little higher and then let's walk the dog alternating heel lifts bending one knee straightening the other and then vice versa Coming back to your neutral down dog. Now let's drop our knees down onto the mat and come into an all fours position. So moving the hands right under the shoulders, the knees right underneath the hips. Let's do our cat cow stretch. So arching the upper back, tucking under the hips for our cat, and then flowing into our cow. Chest and belly come down towards the mat. Let's go the opposite direction. Exhale as you round back into your cat. Inhale as you flow into your cow. Extended child's pose with your arms out in front of you. It can be a regular child's pose with your arms folded back by your side, or it can be a puppy pose. This has a less severe bend for the knee, leaning on your forearms, your hips are in the air. And you're just taking this time, whichever resting pose you decided to do, you're just taking this time for a little rest for the body while you breathe. in my upper arms. 
And then once I touch my torso down, I'm going to slide those elbows forward, coming into a sphinx pose. So I've propped my chest up with my elbows, and I'm just looking forward and breathing. And then let's bring our hands underneath the shoulders where the elbows were. Turn your toes under and push back into your downward facing dog. Stretching back. Now we can do our three-legged dogs here if you like. This is optional. You can just stay in your downward dog or you can take one leg up into a three-legged dog and then sit that foot down and take the other leg up into three-legged dog. And sit that foot down. Let's go ahead and just walk our feet back in. Coming into our forward fold, where we're just releasing our head and neck, hanging and breathing. Again, it doesn't matter whether your hands touch down to the floor. And you can bend your knees to to release your hamstrings if that feels too much of a stretch in the back of your legs. Now let's bring our hands to the lower part of our back, interlacing our fingers, bringing our palms together. And then if you want, you can take your arms up over your back, making sure your head and neck are completely loose and limp. And then bring your hands back down to your lower back, releasing your hands, letting your hands fall back down to the floor. And then bending your knees, sweeping your arms out, rolling up into your extended mountain. And then come into your chair pose. And back into the mountain. Taking a slow, deep, complete breath here. Step back with our right leg into warrior one. So it's a front facing position. My torso, my hips, my face are facing straight ahead. My front knee is bent. My back leg is fairly straight with that back foot a little diagonal to the side. My hips are square. Now let's open into warrior two. So I'm just gonna step that back foot back. My back foot is right behind the front foot, side facing position. I'm going to come into reverse warrior, front arm up, back arm down. I can look up to that top hand. And then let's windmill the arms forward into side angle. And then back up into warrior two. Let's turn back around into warrior one, turning your hips and your foot back around to face the front. And then step forward into mountain. Making a slow, deep, complete breath. And let's do the other side. Let's step back with the left foot into warrior one. Warrior two, stepping that back foot behind the front. Front foot doesn't need to move at all. It's your anchor leg. It stays right there while the rest of your body can move. Let's come into reverse warrior. Front arm up, back arm down. Looking up to that top hand. And then let's windmill our arms forward into our side angle. And then back up to warrior two. And then turning the hips and the foot back around into warrior one, using that front foot as your anchor leg, not moving it, keeping it nice and strong and stable. And then stepping forward into mountain.
in our next flow, I'm going to use a chair in our next flow. So you've moved your maybe your kitchen chair close to you before you started. It's also optional. You don't need to use a chair. You can actually, when we come to um, using the chair, you can just leave that pose out if you like. So the chair is going to be used for our balancing half moon. So let's start our flow with our crescent lunge. I'm going to start on the left side. Normally I start on the right side just so I'm facing you when I do this. So you step whichever foot back you want. We're going to do both sides. So stepping back into crescent lunge. It's like a warrior one front facing position, but I'm up on toes and back with my heel lifted. So it has a balance component in it. Feels a little wobbly. And then I'm going to come into my pyramid. So I'm bringing my hands down on either side of that front leg. I'm straightening that front leg. I'm sitting that back foot down. I want that back foot to be totally down on the floor, including the heel. If the heel's not down, I can step it forward a little bit until it's down. I want to try to keep that front leg straight so I can keep my torso up because if I start to lower my torso and round over the position, that little front leg may want to bend. So I can keep my torso up while I round down. If it wants to bend, then I can lift my torso back up. Mainly I want to start to get that leg used to being straight, but it's a big stretch. So if that leg wants to bend, let it. And then let's go ahead and bend that front knee into a lunge. I'm going to bring my hands up to the chair cushion. I'm rolling up on my back toes. I'm going to lift that back leg up. This is my balancing half moon. Now I can stay right here and go no further with that balancing half moon, or I can start to open to the side, opening the hips first, taking that arm up the midline. Keep lifting that leg. Keep opening your torso to the side. When you're ready to come down, bring that hand back down. Set that back foot all the way back into your crescent lunge. When you're ready, you can take your hands up off that chair. Come back into your crescent lunge pose, and then step forward into mountain. Taking a deep breath, and let's do the other side. So step back with your other leg into crescent lunge. And then come down into your pyramid, straightening your front leg, sitting your back foot down, hinging at your hips, bringing your hands down on either side of that front foot. Now, if you have blocks at home, you can bring your hands to the blocks to extend your arms. If not, maybe use your chair cushion to uh, extend your arms a little bit more. We're trying to keep that front leg straight. The back leg is our strong leg in this position. It's straight. We're pushing down and back with the back foot. We're rounding over that front leg until it wants to bend. Then we can bring our torso back up or just let the front leg bend. Your choice. And then let's start to bend the front knee coming into a lunge. Let's take our hands up to the chair cushion, lifting that back leg up. I've shifted my weight forward onto the front leg and onto my chair that I'm leaning on. And I can lift that back leg comfortably up to hip height. Now I can start to open. I turn my hip open. Then I turn my chest to the side, taking my arm up. slowly bring that hand back down, back down to the chair, and I set that back foot all the way back into my crescent lunge. I haven't let go of the chair yet, so I'm still feeling stable. I've rolled up on my toes and back now. I'm going to lift my torso and arms back up into my crescent lunge, and then step forward into mountain, taking a deep breath. Now, I'm not going to 
going to need my chair anymore, so I'm going to take it off my mat, just setting it aside. And we're going to do some more balancing. So if you want, you can use your chair in the balancing. You can hold on to it. Maybe you're standing directly behind it, maybe to the side of it, maybe off your soft surface that you uh, pulled out for yourself or your mat. Any of that's fine. Let's start with our star pose. So let's take our arms out diagonally, shift the weight to the standing leg, taking the toe to the side, lifting that foot up off the floor if you want. Continue to breathe. Use your focal point, a place for your eyes to gaze, 10 or 20 feet in front of you. And then slowly bring your arm and leg back down. Take a deep breath. Extend your arms out again diagonally. Shift your weight over to the other side, setting your toe on the floor, lifting it up if you like. So bringing your hands to heart center, turning your foot perpendicular, taking your heel up to your ankle. Your toes are on the floor, they can stay right there. Or you can pick your foot up off the floor, bringing the bottom of your foot to the side of your calf, or even your heel above your knee. Any of that's fine. Let's take our arms up overhead. And then slowly bring your arms out to the side. Hands come back to heart center. And then bring your hands and your foot back down. Take a deep breath. And let the other side. Hands come to heart center. Turn your other foot perpendicular. Bring your heel up to your ankle, your toes are on the floor. You want to lift it up to your calf or above the knee, you can. Let's take our arms up overhead. And then slowly bring your arms out to the side. Come back to heart center. And then bring your hands and your foot back down. Take a deep breath. And let's come down onto our mat. We're going to do that through our garland pose. So we're taking a little wider stance. Your feet a little diagonal to the side. Hands to heart center. Just come down into your squat. Now your squat, your heels may be lifted, your hips may be lifted. That's fine. You can rearrange your feet. You want to push your knees open with your elbows and sit upright as much as feels comfortable for you. Now if you're close enough down, you can bring your hands behind your back and have a seat on the mat or have a seat any way you want to get down onto your mat. Let's come into our cobbler's pose next. So taking the bottom of our feet together, they can be in close to you or out of ways or anywhere in between. Your knees are relaxed down. And let's stretch our neck. So take your chin over to your shoulder, hold this position and just breathe. And turn your head back to center and then turn your chin over to your other shoulder and then turn back to 
the center. Now drop your right ear down to your right shoulder. Back up to center and drop left ear down to left shoulder. And back up to center. Let's go ahead and just extend our legs out a hold in the back of one of your thighs. Slowly let yourself come down onto the mat, bringing your knees into your chest, rocking side to side. And then come back to center. Let's hold one knee into our chest by the back of our thigh. Extend the other leg out and let it just rest on the floor. You're relaxing as many muscles as you can. And you're just breathing. Slowly and deeply. And then take that extended leg. Bending the knee, bringing that knee back to your chest, holding onto it by the back of your thigh, and then extend the other leg out and let it just rest completely on the floor, letting your muscles relax, breathing slowly and deeply. extended leg. Bend the knee. Bring that knee back to your chest. Sliding your hands up to the top of your knees. Start to take your knees around in a circle. So you're rotating on your lower back. And then go the other direction with your circle. center, sitting your feet back down on the floor, taking your arms out into a T. Let's pick up our hips and shift those hips as much as we can to the left and then sit them down. Then pick up our feet, stack our knees, let our knees roll over to the floor on the right and let them just relax down onto the floor. And then turn your head to look towards your left hand. We're in a reclined twist. Relax all your muscles. And then turn your head back to center, bringing your knees back up to neutral and reposition your hips so they're straight. And then let's pick up our hips, shift them as much as we can to the right and set them down. Then pick up our feet, stack our knees, let them roll over to the floor on the left. They're relaxing down on the floor. And then we can turn our head to look towards our right hand. Relaxing your muscles. Allowing your lower back to release. Take our foot up towards the ceiling and point and flex our foot. Stretching it out. And then let's start to make some circles with your toes and fingers. 
rotating at your ankle and at your wrist. And then go the other direction with your circles. And relax your arm down, setting your foot down. Let's take the other foot up, pointing and flexing your foot. And then start to make some circles with your toes and fingers. And then go the other direction with your circles. your arms down, setting your foot down. Let's come into our relaxation pose. So you have a choice. You can either lean your knees together. Your feet are 12 to 18 inches apart. Your lower back is being supported by the floor. Or you can extend your legs straight, feet are wide. Arms are away from your side, palms facing up. Either relaxation pose is fine. You're wanting to come to a pose that fully enables you to relax. So you may want to use your pillow here. You may want to cover up with a throw so that you don't get chilled having, after having maybe worked up a little bit of a sweat. You're closing your eyes. You're letting your breath be slow and deep. So while your eyes are closed, I'm going to read some positive thoughts. Just let these thoughts wash over you while you're relaxing. I focus on radiant health in body, mind, and spirit. I accept the condition of my health with love, no matter what my mind or the external world tells me about it. I make choices that enhance my health and well-being. I choose foods that support me, and I love eating natural whole foods that are good for me. I enjoy a daily exercise routine that stimulates and uplifts me. I focus on maintaining healthy, supportive thoughts. I breathe in health. I exhale any residue of negativity. I radiate a sense of vitality and strength. I am a perfect picture of health. As I focus on my perfect health, any issues or concerns I have gradually melt away. You can do so moving slowly, but if you're not, just stay down, listening to the music, continuing to relax. 
And when you do come up, say to yourself, Namaste. Namaste means the light in me honors the light in you. The divine in me acknowledges the divine in you. And you're respecting yourself for having spent the last hour doing something positive for yourself, supporting yourself, loving yourself by doing so. I'm going to ring our time, and that will either be a signal to come up or a signal for you to just stay and relax some more. Namaste.